Hello, welcome to thecontentcure.co. I'm your host, Erica Johnson. Have you been wondering how to expand your business to six or even seven figures? Well, today you're in for a treat. We are talking to Shanice Wise about how she helped entrepreneurs just like you do that with her six building block system. So I'm so glad to have Shanice here. How are you doing today, Shanice? Hey, Erica, I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here. Well, we are excited to have you. For our audience, can you please share a little bit about yourself? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I am a, a business expansion coach and strategist, and business owners hire me to teach them how to earn revenue for not only what they do, but what they know. And so I really focus on teaching them how to expand their business through developing different branches of business, um, helping them identify their systems, their strategies, and really how to build a six, seven figure business. So that's what I do. And I'm a mom and I'm a wife and all that good juicy stuff. <laughs> yes, for the mom bosses. Yes. By the way, I know we didn't have this plan, but do you do you like the word mom boss or mompreneur or or no? Do you like that or no? Um, it doesn't bother me. It, it doesn't bother me. I just I love being a mom. I love being a boss. So hey, you know, it doesn't bother me at all. I, I love both. Yes, I'm a mom boss too. So Woo! I just I love, it. I love it. So how did your story shape who you are today? Oh, actually, sorry. Let me go back a few steps. <laughs> okay. Oh, I forgot to mention, Shanice has a treat for us today. Can you tell our audience a little bit more about the treat you have? Um, yes. So I think you are referring to my um, six building blocks to business expansion. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, and you had a freebie for them as well. Is it your expansion quiz? Oh, yes. Thank you. So yes, if you go to my website, which is www.shanicemwise.com, okay, and there's a quiz that pops up. And for those of you who are really trying to figure out what your next step is, and you don't have anyone helping you get there, the quiz, when you take the quiz, it will tell you exactly where you fall and what your next steps are in order to shift and move to the next level. So it's a great eye opener, okay? And then it also leads, if you wanna have a business chat with me, we can definitely talk about your score, where you fall and what systems and strategies you need to put in place in order to shift and move to the next level. So go to my website, you can check it out. Or if you follow me on Instagram, Shani Simwise, in the profile link, you can find it as well. So it's free. I'm excited about the expansion quiz. I'm afraid to take it because I'm like, what's it going to tell me I need? <laughs> I know my systems are lacking, but I'm so glad that with your business expansion strategy and coaching business, you help business owners, not only like you said with their business, but also expand their expertise to six and seven figures. So I would love for you to share with the audience your six building blocks. Yes. And before I do that, Erica, can I share? Because a lot of people are like, well, what do you mean? What do you mean? So I know you do amazing at what you do. And I'm sure people come to you and they're like, Erica, can you teach me how to do what you do? Can you teach me how to create what you create? And, or can I pick your brain or can you mentor me? And a lot of times we give away a lot of free information that we could definitely charge for. And most business owners are strong in an area, what they're gifted at. So what I teach them how to do is not only get paid for what they're doing, like what you're doing, Erica, but also get paid for what you know you know, creating different um, programs and services and different things that you can offer and you can teach in addition to what you already do, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. You okay. teach the entrepreneur how to take what they already know and then create different revenue streams from that. Yes. Boom. There you go. There you go. So you asked me about my um, six business uh, building blocks, the business expansion. So I want to dive in. So first, when a business owner comes to me, um, we, we do the building block number one, which is the identification stage. We identify where they're at, how strong the foundation of their business is. And you'll be surprised. I have seven figure business owners who have a shaky foundation and really need additional help. So it doesn't matter where you're at. We identify where you're leaving money on the table, how you can grow, how you can expand and making sure you have the right systems and strategies in place. So I do a business audit. 
And then the next phase is workflow. The next box is or block is workflow management, where I make sure you have systems because as business owners, no, normally as a CEO, we're not really accountable to anyone. So I make sure that you're accountable uh, to yourself. And if you're in my program, accountable to me. So we put all your tasks and all that good stuff up in the workflow management system. And then we look at your messaging. And this is an area where a lot of business owners, no matter where they're at, they fall short because they say that their ideal client is this person and their messaging is actually reaching a different person and they're leaving money on the table. So we really fine tune and make sure the content and messaging is attracting the ideal client. Then we look at huh, lead generators. And I believe as a business owner, you should have especially a business owner that is looking to scale, you should have at least two to three strong leads. Like my you know, um, quiz. That is a strong lead generator that really helps me be able to work with business owners. Then we look at strategic selling. If you're in a place where you have high ticket uh, programs and services, there's a different communication, different verbiage, different things that you say compared to what you would say for a hundred dollar package. Okay. So if you have something where you offer, you know, something at 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, there are different words that you need to use. There's different ways that you need to act and operate. So we focus on strategic selling. And then lastly, scalability. Are you building a business that you can scale? And then when I say scale, what is it that you want to do? Do you want to sell it? Do you want to eventually pass it on down to your family? Do you want to create generational wealth? What is the next step once you get to the place where you no longer desire to run your business, but it's doing very well. So we make sure that we set it up the right way. So those are my six building blocks. So it's not necessarily for the new business owner, but it's for the business owner who is like, okay, I got it. I'm established. Now let's go to the next level. Of those six building blocks, which one do you think is the most challenging for your students and clients to grasp? Oh gosh. Right. Um, I would say if I put, if, if I had to give you the top two, um, the messaging and then the workflow management, because it is hard for CEOs and business owners to stay on task and be consistent because our minds are constantly going and we're adding different things and, you know, um, you need to hire and I mean it's just so your mind is so many different places so being consistent as the CEO is very important um and then the next one is um the workflow management is number one and then number two I think did I say it backwards let me say it this way workflow management number one the consistency of working for yourself and being strong at it and the accountability and then number two the messaging because a lot of times we feel like we're reaching the right people, but we're not. And, you know, I don't care where you're at in business. You have to keep um, fine tuning it. You need to continue to critique it. You need to continue to make sure that the solution that you're offering is actually meeting someone's issue, their problem. You know, you got to make sure that you're not just putting a Band-Aid on it. You need to be able to stitch up, stitch it up and keep it sealed. That's when people actually come to you. And that's when you can sell more higher ticket um, um, products or, or programs or services. So answer your question, workflow accountability, number one, messaging, number two. I agree. I agree. I'm so glad you said it because the messaging for my own business, it took me a few years and I feel like I'm the type of person, I look at it every six months, if not more. Yeah because you know, I don't want to be a perfectionist, wasting on the messaging that I'm not serving my clients, but I totally agree. Business owners need to look at their messaging each few years. And like you said, if they're noticing that the wrong people are con, and when I say the wrong people, we never want to say to people, oh my God, you're wrong. But if we're starting to be unhappy in our business, if our employees are starting to be unhappy with our clients or with the services we're offering, and if we're noticing our, at the end of the day, it's all about customer service. If we're noticing they're unhappy, then like you said, we have to look at the messaging, make sure it's a good relationship. We have to look at our workflow to make sure, are we meeting our customers' expectations? I love it. So with that being said, with your program, what's one of your clients' um, experiences where your program did something you didn't expect it to do for your clients? 
Well, you know, that is so good because I also, inside of my program, I really work with my clients on personal development and as well as spiritual development. Like the whole spiritual aspect is very, very important to me. And when I, when people come to my program and they're interested in, in my services, there's some non-negotiations, right? A non-negotiation factor is I teach using spiritual and biblical principles. And if that's not okay with you, then that's fine, but I'm not your coach, right? So I make that clear in advance. So one of my clients, she came to me already, a million dollar business owner. She came to me with five different branches of business, you know, and, and she actually was in my program for two years before she graduated. I mean, just very, very great person. Well, when she came to me, she wasn't really, you know, she didn't really know the Lord. Um, she knew him, but didn't really have a relationship with him. And when she left me, when she graduated, she had 17 branches of business in place. Okay. So she went to a whole nother level as a seven figure business owner, but she also grew spiritually. And that, I, I mean, that was the most fulfilling. I didn't expect it. Now I do, you know, that was something that really broke the barrier for me. And she was like, Shanice, I've learned so much from you, not just in growing my revenue, but growing me as a 360 degree person. Mm -hmm. So I had to write that down because that's something that um, I, I, when my clients come to me, I want them to get that. I want them to grow in every area of, of business and every area of themselves. You know, that's important for me because as CEOs, we can't have a janky life and then expect to run a great business. Everything kind of, you know, intersects. So I would say that was one of the most fulfilling. Yes, she left with more branches of business, but she also grew spiritually. And I felt like my work was done, you know, so. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. I was not expecting you to say that. <laughs> that you drew her closer to God or you facilitated her to draw closer to God along with expanding her business and her expertise. That's amazing. Thank you. So Thank you. since we are on the content care.co, okay. where we all things, social media, blogging, video marketing, and a little bit of email marketing. And I noticed that email marketing was one of your favorite things to talk about. So I am going to ask you about that. But before we dive into that, what is your favorite type of content? Um, I love video because I feel like it allows you, now are you talking about that kind of content? Yes. Okay, good. All right, I wanna make sure I'm answering your questions yes. right. I love video because even if you don't know the person, it allows you to kind of get to know them. You know what I mean? Like there's, I'm a visual learner. So there's something about the, the visual part of learning. And I feel like videos do that. It's a great introductory to whoever it is that you're trying to gather information from. So I love videos. I love video as well. And especially you being a business expansion coach and strategist, I know that you could kill it on video. So I'm going to be on the lookout on Instagram being like, where's Shanice's video this week? Where's her videos? <laughs> I know. So if you go to my IGTV, I have a whole bunch of different video trainings. And I did notice that, but I'm saying I'm going to be looking out for the future ones since we oh, have. Our okay, okay, I see. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Because believe it or not, I'm in a five day challenge with a lady I met on Clubhouse. She has a, a go live challenge for five days. Yesterday was the first day. It was funny because my daughter came in and kept like interrupting. Uh, and it was a super candid, like, little vlog of what's it like in a mom's world when she's trying to work from home, the kids at home. Long story short, so I, today, after this, I do need to go live. And then the day, a few days after that, to just, you know, participate in the challenge fully. So live, oh, so that's one of my rapid fire questions, but I'll save that for later. Okay, let me do it. So maybe I'll go live too. So when we get off, we'll both go live. Very cool, very cool. So video content is your favorite type of content, which I love too. What's your favorite social media platform? So my favorite is Instagram. I love Instagram. Um, that's my number one. And I would say YouTube is my number two. So the reason why Instagram is number one is because of the visual. Like you can literally tell your story through the whole visual aid of people looking at your pictures, looking at your reels, looking at, you know, your Insta TV, your Insta story. I love it. And I love the way Instagram continues to evolve. And you know what? So one of the things that I am learning, Erica, is yes, you want a million followers, but what I've learned is just, you know, through my coaching and teaching, there's a lot of influencers out there 
that are barely making any mm -hmm. revenue. And that was an eye opener for me because I figured when you get to your 10,000, your, you know, 100,000, like you have arrived, but that doesn't mean anything. So I don't know. I completely agree. That's what I teach my clients um, because a lot of my clients do come to me with that desire to reach 10K followers, 20K, 50K, 2,000, 5,000, 1 million. Mm -hmm. And I have to explain to them that there's a difference between likes and follows and dollars and cents. If we could catch the person or likes and follows, all of us would be happy because we get so many comments, we get so many likes, we get so many follows. But with the dollars and cents, which I'm going to let you take it away when I ask you about the email marketing, it's like you said, taking that person from the like and the follow and the engagement to an actual relationship, right? Absolutely. So that's the, that's the key to where those influencers, they might not have that skill to monetize their gifts. And it's not that they can't because they've amassed an audience. If they didn't care for their followers, they've amassed an audience. So they have the attraction part down, but they have to work on that no trust factor. People like them and people might know them on a superficial level because they have pretty pictures and pretty videos but it's that trust and that trust is the difference between money and not money which yeah. i'm gonna let you take it away with the lead i love what you said about the lead magnet need for business owners and then also like i said i know one of your favorite topics is email marketing so i would love for you to share with our audience because i know you said your favorite platform was instagram how do you think that someone can really maximize their Instagram and their lead magnet together. So in the, so what I've done, and you can go check it out on my Instagram page. So I work with a CRS, a CRM system, which is customer relationship management system called Entreport. So that's why I house, you know, all my e campaigns and my email sequences, my landing pages. So I created a landing page where if you go to my profile on Instagram, you can click on, because a lot of people use um, Linktree or place, but I actually customized mine. So it's Shanice.info mm -hmm. or something. So you click on it and it takes you to a landing page where you can click. You can take my quiz. You can schedule a session with me. You can um, get my um, um, newsletter. Like there's things that you can do. I believe email marketing is the best because what happens if one day social media stops? You lose your followers. But when you have built a strong um, email distribution list, that is the only piece of real estate that you own, right? And you can grow that. You are in control of it. No one can tell you what you put in it, you know, what you can't, you know, because Instagram can block you. They can shut you down if they if you put something out there that is not um, what they want. So I feel like that is the best because you can post your videos, Erica, you can post your blogs and you can literally build a relationship with them through email that can lead to a conversation. And not saying that social media can't, but I just feel like there's more ownership in growing your email, you know, I'm looking at your page right now because I'm like, where is it? Where is it? Because on my phone, yeah. my phone acts funny sometimes. So on my phone, it wasn't pulling up your link in bio, but now on my computer, I'm hoping it does because I want it because I did check it out before, but I want to see it. Yep. Yeah. So it's um, right at the top, and I think I have it's on yours, right? Huh? I have the videos on yours too, like welcoming them. Yes, um, you do. I love it. Okay, so just if you're watching the video, you can see she has. Yeah video on her link in bio that was dope that's what made you stand out to me I was like oh that is dope <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so yeah I mean if anyone listening you know I would say do not put all your eggs in one basket you know meaning social media yes grow your platform firms for real like grow them grow all of them the ones you know like I love LinkedIn I love Instagram you know grow them, but make sure you grow your email distribution list as well. And you grow it by having, it's all a strategy, having strong lead generators. And your lead generators need to make sure that you're not just giving away free stuff. It needs to be something that's going to cause people to act. Anybody can download a, a ebook. Anyone can get a PDF, but 
what's going to make them really want to have a conversation with you and learn more about what it is that you do. You need good lead mag magnets. So it's a, it's a strategy. And, and that's what I teach in my program, because you'll be surprised, Erica, you know, business owners who surpass the six figure mark, sometimes they just get there. Sometimes, you know, things just go and, you know, they get there. And then once they get there, they're like, oh my gosh, my biz, like, how do I keep this going? And how do I go to the next level? So introducing strong lead generators, you know, making sure that their systems and strategies are on point, making sure, like, if you think about it, if you build a house on a shaky foundation, then what happens to the house? It came awesome. in, right? So it's the same thing with your business. If you build your business on a shaky foundation, if you don't have the right systems and strategies, if you don't have, you know, the right pricing um, strategies and you don't have, you know, areas where you're outsourcing and automating and you have help, but if you don't have that, then, you know, your business may not stand for a long time. And they say, when you start a business, one out of five business owners, will, you know, no, what is it? One out of five yet will not last. And as you get, the longer you last, you'll see other business owners kind of drop off. So you have to make sure you're the one business owner that definitely lasts. So I love what you said about the lead generators. Um, me, myself, I have quite a few that I've used over the years, but I switch them up. So my question for you with the lead generators and the email marketing, with those three really good lead generators, how often should the entrepreneur change those? Or should, because those three work, should they just tweak them as needed and, you know, roll with them for a few years? What do you think? If they work, it's almost like if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? Okay. So did I say that right? Right. Yeah. So if it's working, then run that bad boy out until it doesn't work anymore. Okay. So my quiz, it helps educate people. So guess what? I'm going to keep using it until it does not bring in any new business owners and people who need my help. So the thing about it is, if you have a lead generator that's not working, then it's time to either get help or you figure out what else you need to put up there. And the question you have to ask yourself is, how many leads do you want coming in on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis? And then from those leads, what's your ratio? Okay, what is your closing ratio? Are they your ideal clients? Are you having the conversations? And what is your ratio? Is it five to one? You know, do you have to do 10 uh, sales calls or I call them discovery sessions in order to close a person in your program or your service or whatever. So there's a lot that goes with it. But I would say if it's working, stick with it. And maybe just introduce another one, you know, but if it's working, stick with it. I love that. I have the same phrase in my business. I'm like, let's not recreate the wheel every time. Let's just make it, like you said, if a lead magnet's it's working, let's see how we can get more conversions and maybe more actions that we want instead of just scrapping it and saying, let's make a new lead magnet just to make a new lead magnet <laughs> or yes. lead generator, I should say. So I totally agree. Now is the, oh, I have one more question really. Oh yeah, I have a one really good question. So yeah. Shanice, because you help people, like you said, not only with their business, not only with their expertise, but also from a spiritual standpoint, what makes you feel inspired? What makes me feel inspired is when my clients come to my program and when they leave it, they have, you know, grown, they have developed, they're winning. And even in the midst of, you know, my program, like one of my clients, she was with me um, for about three months and she closed one of the biggest deals ever. And it just, and she gave reference to me and I'm like, okay, God, you know, I'm doing exactly what I am supposed to be doing. I am using the gift that you have given me to help take business owners to their next level. And that, that brings me so much joy. It brings me so much joy. And it knows that I'm on a, it, it shows me that I'm on the right path and for me to keep going because we as business coaches, we as CEOs, you know, we still need to be inspired. We still need to be encouraged, you know? So seeing my clients win is everything for me because I look at it this way. If they win, I win. And when we both win, God wins. Yes. And it's the perfect match, you know? So 
I love that. I feel the same way in my business when my clients, because um, sometimes when I build their website, I can see how many sales come in. <laughs> and when I see them get sales, I get excited. I do a little happy. <laughs> I'm like, ROI, the return on investment. Okay. So this is, oh, before we go and before I do the rapid fire questions, one more question. Okay. What is the Unstoppable Community? I see it behind you and we talked a little bit before, but please share that with our audience. I know they're going to love it. Yeah, so the Unstoppable Community is for business owners that are very serious, they're very focused, they're unstoppable, they're willing to do whatever it takes to reach their new level, to reach their new height. Um, So I do have a community on Facebook. Um, On Clubhouse, I have a community, the Unstoppable Community. And I mean, literally, it's just business owners who are like Shanice. I want to go to the next level. What do I need to do? And then I also bring other business owners like yourself, Erica, in where I know you can help some of my clients. So not only are they my clients or potential clients, but it's people that I network with and build relationships with that I know can also be a benefit to my ideal clients. And you have your podcast. Re- re- when is that happening this year? Okay. So my podcast story, um, my podcast is actually called Red Lipstick Chronicles, Tips from the Lips of Successful Entrepreneurs, but I'm rebranding. So in the next six months, it will definitely be out. The things that I've learned about podcasting, you know, as we rebrand, I'm making sure that I get it right. So it will actually be um, the title, the name will be changed to the Unstoppable Community Podcast podcast for entrepreneurs that are expanding so look for it to come in the next six months or so Um, we're going to do a huge launch and I'm excited about it but if you do want to you know listen and kind of get the messaging and content that I put out there look for Red Lipstick Chronicles tips from the lips of successful entrepreneurs you can find it everywhere iTunes everywhere I'm so excited for your new podcast episodes because I've really enjoyed this episode with you today. And you're awesome on Clubhouse. And I can't wait to have you on it, you know, so that's going to be awesome. Yes. And I don't know how we forgot to mention on Clubhouse, Shanice does host amazing rooms, usually they're panels. So definitely connect with us on Clubhouse as well if you are on Clubhouse. And then be sure to check us out on Instagram as well. And I'll include her Instagram information in my Instagram. But now is the fun part. Yay. Okay questions okay what's your word of the year my word of the year so it's two words new levels so every year god gives me either a word words or a sentence and this year he gave me new levels yes new levels i <laughs> love it favorite music artist oh my gosh i have so many i would say mary j blige Okay, I feel girl. That's I love 90s Mary. So okay. yeah, yeah, that's my girl. And I love how she's evolved. I love that she's acting now. I love that she bounced back from a divorce because you know I did the same thing and now I'm remarried and I love my husband. Oh my gosh. So I just I love her story. I love who she is. So that's my girl. Like the new generation, everybody loves Beyonce. That's how I love Mary J. Yes, I love it. Favorite podcast? Favorite? Oh my gosh, mine. <laughs> <laughs> that part. Okay. Yes, yes. Hot or cold drinks? Oh, okay. So the place that I'm in right now is cold. I love cold. You know, like fill my glass up with ice. I love cold. Um, even though it's winter, isn't that weird? Mm-hmm. It's very weird. But yeah, I, I just, yeah, cold. <laughs> TikTok or Reels? Um, Reels. Reels. So I'm trying to get into TikTok, Erica. So my 12-year-old son, he has been teaching me and walking me through it. But it's like the same thing, the Reels on Instagram, TikTok. So I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. It's funny because I have I have a seven-year-old that was obsessed with TikTok. And she's taught me a few things here and there. Like she's kind of taught me how to edit my TikTok. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You, you have to teach me. You have to teach yes, me. Yes. And so um, it's funny because I've had some content I put on TikTok, like eight views, no likes. I put on reels, thousands of views, hundred, uh, over 100 likes. I'm like, what? So I, I got to figure out the algorithm myself. And then one last rapid fire, live video or recorded video? Live. I love live. I love, I now, I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, my podcast, you know, they do, you know, they're recorded, but I love going live on my different platforms because I love being able to answer the questions right away. I love the conversation. 
I love building relationships and I believe that you can do that going live and you know that connection so well I've enjoyed this so much Shanice how can our audience connect with you and work with you Okay, so my name is the same on every platform. It's Shanice M. Wise. Actually, my name is Shanice. So it's Shanice M. Wise um, everywhere. So if you look me up, you can find me. And if you're interested in shifting your business and, uh, you know, adding additional uh, branches and growing and shifting and going to, you know, the next level, definitely I would love to have a conversation with you. You can go to my website. You can fill out a discovery session form. You can go to my Instagram page, click on the link fill out a discovery session form, you can send me a direct message and we can go from there. We can definitely go from there. My programs are very exclusive, um, but I'm very hands-on and I look for serious business owners that really desire to create empires of six to seven figures. Well, it's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed being, you being a guest on my podcast. So grateful that we've worked on a panel before on Clubhouse. Yes. And you're going to be on many more. Like, I, I love what you do. I love your feel. I love your personality. So, yeah, just be be looking. I'll be yes. doing some more. Yes. All right, listeners. Till next time. Bye-bye.